Hello YouTubers! Today I want to talk to you a little bit about Gold Corner BGA chips. And I've accumulated a few lately. It's not a huge number, but it's enough to uh, get a reasonable amount of gold from them. So I'm going to recover the gold from these BGA chips and I'm going to show you how it works. Now the reason these are called Gold Corner BGA chips, obviously, is because they've got a, a gold corner on them. And BGA stands for Ball Grid Array. And uh, that means each, each chip on the bottom has an array of solder balls, uh, or a grid of solder balls that are used to attach them to the circuit board that they all came from. And uh, you can get them off with just a little heat. The solder will melt and you can just pop them off. So um, there's a fair amount of gold in these. But it takes a little effort to get it. And there's a couple of different ways to do it. And I'll show you what's commonly known as the wet ashing method using sulfuric acid. It's not really my preferred method. I don't really like wet ashing because it takes a long time, stinks like hell, makes a horrible fumes, and it produces a lot of um, acidic waste that's really hard to dispose of. Uh, now, if it was up to me, I'd just pop these in my foundry and... Um, in about 20 minutes I'd have them ashed and can pulverize them and start extracting the gold from them then but uh, you know a lot of people don't have access to a foundry so you know if you've got a bunch of gold corner BGA chips wet ashing is probably about your only option for getting the gold out of these things now the chip has two parts it has this black epoxy upper section and it's got the fiber, green fiber, sometimes other colored fiber, lower section. Almost all the gold is in the upper black section. So, and it's also the easiest part to process is the upper black section. So what you have to do to work with these chips, first thing you gotta do is separate the two pieces. I'll show you how to do that. There's a couple different ways, methods that work. It's pretty simple, just takes a few minutes. Okay, my camera doesn't really want to focus this close, but what you got to do is you got to separate these two pieces. And if you've got reasonably strong fingers on these bigger ones, it's easy. You can just sort of bend one corner down and bend another corner down and just sort of keep pulling, pulling, pulling and just tear them off. So there's, there's the upper section, which contains most of the gold. I'll just set that over there in a pan. Now this lower section looking at it it's got lots of obvious gold on it but I'll let you know a little secret this lower section has almost no gold in it very little yeah you can see gold there but what it is really is just um, copper plated with a very thin layer of gold at least I believe it's copper that's plated with a very thin layer of gold so in total there's very little gold in this thing and what you'll see on a lot of uh, gold recovery channels on YouTube is um, several prominent people with popular gold recovery channels. They'll do, and yeah, that's got a lot of gold on it. It looks like it does anyway, but it doesn't really. It's all the gold's in here. But a lot of what these prominent channels will do is they'll say, um, okay, we're going to do uh, gold corner BGAs today. And this will be part one. I'll show you how to process the tops of them. And then part two, we'll talk about the bottoms. Well, what happens is the promised part two never comes along because at some point they realize that processing the bottoms really isn't worth the effort. So yeah, see, it looks, it looks promising. It looks like there's a lot of gold there. It really does. You know, you wouldn't want to throw this out, but I got to tell you, there's hardly any gold there. It's almost all in here. All the bond wires are in here. That's just thin gold flashing on there. So part two never happens from these other channels. Um, I noticed that a while back. The part two never happens. Because they just don't want to, oh I split that one in half, but that's okay. Let's get the other half off. There we go. But that's okay, because you know, like I said, there's very little gold in these. And unless you have a literal ton of them, it really isn't worth the effort of processing them. 
That being said, I do have a method for getting the gold out of these that, that it works, but you know, it, it can be very disappointing unless you have a lot of these because you're not going to get much gold. Um, I'll talk quickly about my method for doing that while I'm taking these apart. Um, what you do is you put these in a beaker, a bunch of them. You got to wait until you got a bunch of them or it's really not worth the time and the chemicals to do it. Get a bunch of these, put them in a beaker, boil them in hydrochloric acid and that will get rid of all the tin on the back because tin and gold do not get along. You don't want your gold solutions contaminated with tin or you'll never be able to precipitate out the gold in a decent way. All you'll get is uh, um, micro fine gold that doesn't want to settle and wants to stay in the water column. So you got to get rid of the tin. So boiling these for a few hours in hydrochloric acid is the first step to get rid of the tin. Then the next step is to uh, rinse them well, get all the chloride out of them, and then boil them in dilute nitric acid for a couple of hours. And what that does is it dissolves all the copper that's in here. There's a lot of copper in here. All the traces are copper just with gold flashing on them. And uh, so after you boil them in nitric acid for a couple of hours, all the copper's gone. And the gold is, a lot of it's free, some of it's still stuck in the matrix in there. Filter off the liquid through a, through a filter, even coffee filter will work just to catch the little bits of free gold that are floating around after that. And then uh, put, put the filter back in the beaker with these things and then hit it, you know, with aqua regia. And then you can dissolve the gold. But I'm going to tell you, unless you've got a whole lot of these, you're not going to get much gold. Like if I was to process just the backs from this bunch of uh, gold corner BGAs, I might get a very light dusting of gold on the bottom of the beaker after I precipitate it out with SMB. Um, really just not enough to uh, deal with on its own. What I normally do in cases like that where I get such a small amount of gold um, precipitated out is I just catch it on a filter and set the filter aside and the next time I'm making aqua region to dissolve gold for something I'll throw that filter in just so it, the gold doesn't go to waste. But uh, yeah there's really, even though, even though they're shiny and pretty and tempting, there's not much gold there. All gold's in here and there's a fair amount of it in here too. These things are fantastic for gold recovery. So that's, it's pretty easy if you got big ones and you got strong fingers, you know they come apart pretty easy. You know, it just takes a few minutes. It's even quicker if I'm not yakking at the camera and just we're working on this full time. The smaller ones are a little harder. Um, you can probably still, if you got good fingernails, you can do that. Yeah. Some of them are a little tenacious and don't want to come apart. That's where you get a knife blade. Carefully, so you don't cut yourself, of course. And just slip it between the uh, the fiber bottom and the... And the uh, um, Epoxy top. See, that one doesn't really want to come apart and force them apart. I'll get a knife and I'll handle that one later. I'll do the rest of these off camera and uh, once I get all the tops over here ready to go, we'll move to the next step and I'll show you how wet ashing works. Even though, like I said, I don't really particularly like this method, I think it's something a lot of, a lot of people can handle who uh, don't have the equipment to do uh, the foundry method that I use for ashing chips. And we'll be back in a few minutes with that. All right, I got all of the uh, tops in here in this beaker. And I've got them in a pretty big beaker because this could foam up some. As uh, we're going to use sulfuric acid, concentrated sulfuric acid drain cleaner or drain opener, which should be available to most people, most places. Uh, I don't know about other countries, but in the U.S. you can find it lots of places. Concentrated sulfuric acid. Nasty stuff. Wear your PPE with this stuff. It's nasty. It will burn you. I know. I have scars. Trust me. Let me serve as your bad example. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in oh, a, couple, a couple hundred milliliters to start with of this stuff. It's enough to get everything. That's about 400, I guess. Maybe a little bit more. Make sure everything's well submerged. Put the lid on it, and I'm going to put the heat to it. 
really put the heat to it. And what's going to happen is, as the sulfuric acid heats up, it's going to dehydrate epoxy in there. It's going to it's going to just basically pull it apart, turn it into carbon and water vapor, and lots of nasty, stinky fumes. This is really going to stink. Now, although this method is accessible to a lot of people, a lot of people probably don't want to do this in their neighborhood if they want to, you know, keep their neighbors happy with them. But this is going to really stink. Um, it's going to produce a lot of nasty fumes. And it's in a big beaker because um, the carbon foam that's going to be created as the sulfuric acid digests the epoxy can pop up quite a bit. And um, I don't want it flowing over. One thing you can do when that happens is just pour more sulfuric acid in it to beat the foam down. Uh, it's going to need several several applications of sulfuric acid to uh, digest all that stuff, and it's going to take a while. Probably take the better part of the afternoon to fully digest all that stuff. So uh, I'll show you from time to time what it looks like. All right, it's been about I don't know 20 minutes or so. This is heating up. The uh, acid has turned pretty black starting to fume. The reaction has begun. And uh, I don't know if it's showing up on the video or not, but yeah. Some of the uh, some of the epoxy tops in there are starting to swell up and and uh, fall apart. So it's going to get even nastier here as it goes on as it heats up. So I'll, I'll give you another look at it here in a little bit. Here's Okay, here's one of the dangers of doing it uh, this way. I thought I had it in a tall enough beaker, and still it's overflowing. It really foamed up on me. I walked away for 20 minutes, and this is what happened. So, yeah. Once this uh, gets a little more under control, I'll get my gloves on, and uh, I'll pour in some more acid to beat the foam down. Okay, let me uh, put in some more acid. That really knocks the foam down. It's used up the last of this old bottle. Put in a little more from this new bottle. Okay, and we will leave it to run, although I've turned the heat down quite a bit. My mistake was uh, running off and leaving it on high. Boy, that stinks. That really stinks. Uh, it shows the importance of having a catch pan when you're working with uh, anything gold-bearing. Just in case there's a boil over, if your beaker breaks, whatever, you want to have a catch pan to catch anything. I, I doubt there's much gold in that. It's probably just carbon, foam, and acid, but, you know, I'll wash it out and check it later. So, just back on. Ooh, yeah, got hot. Look at the burn mark. Okay, I left it on high for way too long. That was my mistake. All right, like I said earlier in the video... Let me serve as your bad example. All right, we'll be back in a while. Let this go. All right, the reaction's pretty much back under control. In fact, I'm wondering if it isn't mostly done after that runaway. I don't normally let it get that hot and run away like that. I normally let it run for a much longer period of time at a lower temperature, just so I don't get a runaway like that. Yeah, all right. All right, I think the level of the acid has risen quite a bit. I don't think there's that much foam in there right now. So I'm just going to let this cook for a while longer just to make sure all of that epoxy is digested in there. <clears throat> then I'm going to let it cool down, probably let it cool down overnight, and then deal with it tomorrow morning when it's cool. Because uh, sulfuric acid is bad enough to deal with. Hot sulfuric acid, well, that is scary stuff. That'll practically burn you to the bone if you splash some of it on you. So um, I'm going to let this cook for a little while longer just to make sure the reaction is done. 
turn it off, let it cool down, and then we'll see what we got tomorrow. All right, it's the next day. This is cooled off. Boy, what a mess. I better get my gloves on before I mess with that. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a mess from the boil over, but uh, I left it on the heat for a couple of hours after that. Not much seemed to be happening. Added a little more acid to it again. Not much seemed to be happening. So I'm pretty sure the reaction is done. What should have happened is that uh, all of the uh, tops from the uh, gold corner BGAs in there should be digested by the acid. And what should be left down in there is uh, the um, silicon dyes from the chips inside and tangles of gold bond wires. And that should be all that's left. Get my gloves on. Do this right. Now, this liquid is dense and a little bit lumpy. I'm going to pour it into another beaker through a stainless steel screen. Because the liquid is so dense, I'm afraid it can drag some of the gold down with it. So I'm going to pour it carefully through this screen just to catch anything that might uh, get drug out with the liquid. And there's some lumps there. I think those lumps are just carbon, but we'll see. You can't put this stuff through a filter because it's just, you can see it backing up on the screen. You know, it just totally clogs filters. And, um, you know, it'll destroy them anyway. It's highly acidic. Let's see what we've got left in the bottom of the beaker. And what if anything got caught on the screen? screen needs to be stainless steel or tough plastic for this. Anything else, just going to fall apart. Well, kind of hard to tell what's in there, isn't it? Got to be careful washing this stuff, too, because it's still mostly sulfuric acid in there. Adding water to acid is the wrong way to go about things. But on the other hand, it's the only way to see what's going on. So it's a little bit tricky. Alright. You get a water bottle. Okay, I got a bottle of tap water here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to spritz a little bit in, keep my head well clear. It's going to get hot. It could easily start boiling and popping. May not be fully digested down there. Let me pour this stuff off into another beaker. Oh yeah, it got good and hot doing that. Wash it a little more, see what I'm dealing with here. Some of the larger BGAs may not have got fully digested. I do see some dyes in there floating loose. Oh. I see some gold. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This is looking better than I thought at first. I think there's a little bit of undigested uh, epoxy in there. But... There's some big tangles of gold wire, too. The bond wires, all tangled up in balls. 
I'll show you here in a bit. Let me get it a little cleaner, and I'll show you what I'm seeing in here. Okay. Grab the camera and show you what I'm seeing. All right, so. Zoom in a little bit. Focus. That right there, that's a big ball, gold bond wires. Gold bond wires, gold bond wires, gold bond wires. This is a big lump of undigested epoxy. Some metal pieces that were inside that's gold bond wires. These are silicon dyes, silicon dyes, silicon dyes. There's a lot of gold bond wires. See all that gold? And there's probably more inside here. So I thought it was done cooking, but apparently it wasn't. So I think I was going to put that acid back on it and cook it some more, but I think I'm going to put some fresh acid on it and cook it some more, and then we'll see what I get. All right. So I think there's probably more gold in this. There looks like there's some undigested epoxy over here and some over here with gold bond wire sticking out. See that? So I need to uh, put a little bit of fresh acid on this again, put it back on the heat, and uh, finish the process. That was my bad. Thought it was done. Didn't seem to be much happening, but no, it's not done. So I'll give it some fresh acid and we will look at it again. While I'm waiting for this to heat up and cook with the second, second acid extraction, I cleaned out what was in the funnel, or uh, what was in the uh, strainer over here. See all the gold? Sort of washing it. I need to get this stuff back into there so it can finish cooking. What I think I'm going to do is, is just try and wipe up as much of it I can, as I can with a piece of paper towel and throw the whole piece of paper towel in. And let the acid digest it. But this is why I use a strainer when I pour the acid off because that liquid is so dense it will drag some of the gold out of the beaker. All right, let me get this wiped up and into the beaker. Okay, that was actually pretty easy. I was expecting it to be a little harder, but the, the paper towel, I managed to wipe up all the visible gold and all the little lumps of undigested epoxy through the piece of paper towel in the acid and uh, the acid will digest it along with everything else and all the gold's back in the same beaker again so we'll just let it cook and then uh, see what we get well here we are with the second acid digestion got a lot of fumes coming out so something's going on in there shouldn't take too too long because there wasn't that much epoxy left plus the little bit of paper towel I threw in there but I'll let it cook for a good while just to make sure it's actually done this time yeah I don't I don't I don't particularly like the wet ashing process I don't do it very often so you know I make mistakes I should have put in some fresh acid put it back on the heat and let it cook for another few hours before I uh, tried draining it so, but you live and learn. We'll let it go, see what we get. All right, this has been thoroughly cooked. Time to uh, see what we got in the bottom. Hopefully all of the, uh, hopefully all of the uh, epoxy has been dissolved. All right, so let me pour this off through the screen again. Let's see what we got here. Oh wow, look at that. I don't know if that's showing up. Looks like there's a big, great big ball of gold bond wires right there. I see a lot of, uh... wow. Okay, this is gonna be tricky. I see a lot of free gold on the bottom of this beaker. I see a lot of free gold. A lot of it's pretty darn small too like dust okay so I'm gonna to have to be careful not to lose a lot of it fortunately there's not a lot of acid here this time like there was last time so 
So if I have to dilute this down, I can. It's also a lot less viscous than the first time around. So maybe the gold will stay in the bottom of the beaker too. A lot less viscous and dense. here find a uh, stir rod poke around in here a little bit that big ball right there it looks like there's some fiberglass remains there but there is a lot of gold bond wires all tangled up in it there's a big ball of what looks like gold bond wires too maybe also tangled up in some fiberglass but this just like dust, gold dust all over the bottom of the beaker. I really don't know if that's showing up as it slowly falls down under gravity there, but there's a lot of what looks like gold dust in there. I wonder how much of it's going through the sieve, I don't know. Another reason I don't really like this wet ashing process Separating the gold from the acid is not easy. There, I don't really think I want to pour off anymore. I'm afraid I'm going to wind up with a lot of gold in the acid there that I'm pouring off. What I think I'm going to do is switch back to this smaller beaker. Get my spray bottle. Ooh, yeah, sizzle. And remember that's acid in there. Adding water to acid is dangerous. Sizzle, pop, and steam, yep. The water will lower the viscosity of the stuff, and maybe I can pour off. Oh yeah, there's a lot of gold in there. I can pour off more of the liquid and leave the gold behind. Oh, it's hot. Oh, that got it hot. That's burning my hand. Look at that. I don't know how well that's showing up on the video. That, the bottom of that beaker is just covered with gold. There's gold everywhere in there. Yeah, look at that after I clean it off with the spray. I hope that's showing up nice on the video. That is very, very pretty bright gold. There's some fiberglass remains. Some of those uh, BGAs must have had fiberglass inside the epoxy. The, the gold bond wires are all tangled up in the uh, fiberglass. Whoa! Wrong place. That was a mistake. Poured that in the wrong beaker. Okay, pour it in here. Oh, the beaker is so hot. I put it down for a second. But wow, that is pretty cool. That is a lot of gold in there. I should have counted how many BGA chips I did. They were a variety of different sizes, but there were a lot of them. And there's a some really neat looking dyes down there too. The dyes have great patterns on them. Very iridescent. All right, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit more. Try and get some of this black stuff out of here. Without dumping off the gold, if I can avoid it. Probably clean up the outside of the beaker too where I had the boil over. I got it all nasty. Oh, I can see little bits of gold heading for the spout, so stop pouring. I'll have to take this out in the sunlight, tilt it, and look and see how much gold is in it. 
pour that off and get any gold back in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up the outside of this beaker, clean up the cover plate, and uh, the next step is going to be a nitric acid boil to get rid of any copper and other base metals that are hanging out in there, because there's probably some copper. And then after that it's aqua regia to dissolve the gold. And there's a fair amount of gold in there. Okay, so got off to kind of a rocky start, but we're making good progress now. So I'll show you the next step when we get there. Alright, can you see all the gold down there in the bottom of the uh, beaker? I've transferred everything to this smaller beaker. Because it doesn't really need to be in such a huge beaker anymore. In fact, that beaker it was in, I noticed, had a hairline crack in the bottom of it, so I've thrown it out. Not sure how that happened, but... Uh, okay, I'll get another one. But uh, this doesn't need to be in such a big beaker for the next step. For the next step, what we're going to do is give it a dilute nitric acid boil. And that should get rid of any copper that's in there, other base metals. Uh, and it, it'll oxidize away some of the remaining black gunk in there too, whatever that is. So that's, that's where we're going next with a uh, nitric acid boil. Oil dilute nitric acid. So I'll put in some distilled water here. At this point, we're doing everything with distilled water because tap water has chlorine in it. And we're not ready to make aqua regia yet. So, and some of my homemade nitric acid. Too much. It's not going to take much. And we'll put the heat to it. And see if we can dissolve all the base metals in there. I'm sure there's some. There may not be much, but I'm sure there's some in there. Usually, um, there's at least some copper in there and maybe some other stuff too. And like I said, the nitric acid should oxidize a lot of that black gunk to the leftover. Uh, untotally digested bits of epoxy that should all be oxidized there's some fiberglass in there that'll probably continue to fall apart uh, with the nitric acid attacking it and uh, in the end we should have some uh, fairly clean gold so I'll let this go and um, when it's done I'll decant it off and then uh, rinse everything we'll be ready for aqua regia and I'll, I'll show you what this looks like in a little while okay this is heated up got a reaction going on. It's not super vigorous, but it's going on. There's a little bit of uh, ground fume production up here. And uh, the liquid has turned to light blue, so there's almost certainly some copper in there that's going into solution. So um, I think a lot of that bubbling is actually boiling more than uh, than an actual reaction, but I have seen some some stuff that looks like reaction going on. And there's definitely brown fumes and the liquid's turning blue, so there's some copper in there, maybe some other base metals that are getting consumed by the nitric acid. So it's working good. I'm gonna let that go for a while till it looks like the reaction's done. Decant off the liquid, rinse it, and then it'll be time for aqua regia. I hope you can hear me. It's raining pretty hard here. But uh, the nitric acid boil's done. Doesn't seem to be any more reaction going on. Look at all that pretty gold down there. A lot of the junk that was in there has been either oxidized away or dissolved by the nitric acid. And that's pretty clean looking gold. There's a lot of other stuff in there. There's some um, fiberglass mesh and of course a lot of uh, silicon dyes, but uh, that's okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to decant this liquid off carefully so I don't lose gold. I'm going to rinse the contents of the beaker a couple of times with distilled water. And then 
it'll be time to hit it with aqua regia and dissolve the gold so where's my distilled water ah there it is those base metals out of there. Now look how milky that turned. I'm wondering if there might have been some silver in there. Now I think that milkiness, there's no chloride to make silver chloride, I think that milkiness is just bits of the uh, fiberglass mesh falling apart. I think that's what that is. Well, it's okay. Let me see if I can get it suspended in the water column and pour it off. Oop. Pour too fast. You see lots of little bits of gold working their way up towards the spout. Okay. One more rinse, I think. just to get any base metal salts out. Might as well make the gold as clean as possible. Okay. Now we're ready for aqua regia. Dissolve the gold. Once it's all in solution, I'll run what's through the beaker through a filter, catch all the solids, and then precipitate the gold out of the clean solution. Let me get set up for aqua regia. All right, it's aqua regia time. I put my gloves back on. That would be a good idea. Time for the aqua regia. So I've got some muriatic acid here, hydrochloric acid, however you want to call it. I'm going to put not quite 150 milliliters in there. All right. And now for a couple of pipettes of nitric acid. So that's about a one and a half milliliters of nitric acid right there. There's about another one and a half milliliters going in. Okay. We'll see how that does. I don't want to put a lot of excess nitric acid in there because then I just have to neutralize it. So uh, let me uh, warm this up a little because aqua regia works better around 70 C. So we'll get this warmed up and see if we can get all that gold to dissolve. If it won't all dissolve, I'll put a little more nitric acid in, but that might be enough. I'll uh, show you what it looks like as it's cooking. Alright, the aqua regia hasn't really even had a chance to warm up yet, and already got a pretty good reaction going on in there. The gold's so full of uh, bubbles it's floating. Nitrogen dioxide bubbles. So... Yeah, we got a really decent reaction going on. And uh, yeah, it's just, just barely above room temperature already. So, aqua regia, working good. Let's see how vigorous the reaction is. This has been off the heat now. I just warmed it up on the hot plate, then took it off once the reaction started getting really vigorous. And it's been off the hot plate for a long time now. And it's just barely warm, but look how vigorous that reaction is. Gold is going into solution. Look at the color of the solution. That's pretty dark. There's a fair amount of gold in there. So we'll just let this go to completion. And there's no more reaction, there should be no more gold in there. All right, the aqua regia's done its thing. The gold's all dissolved in there. No more reaction going on. 
I have a saturated solution of uh, sulfamic acid here. I'm going to use it to uh, denox the solution in case there's any uh, excess nitric acid in there. I wouldn't be surprised. I generally put in a little too much. And just put in a little bit here. Oh yeah, we got some excess nitric in there. Okay. Didn't think I put in that much, but it was about three milliliters. Yeah, that was probably too much considering how much gold there was in there. All right, I'm not seeing any further reaction. I would say we are denoxed. Next thing I need to do is uh, filter this stuff. Then we can drop the gold with SMB and see what we got. Okay, here we go. Filtration. I'm not going to bother getting the vacuum filtration rig out for such a small amount of liquid here. I'll just use the gravity filtration. It'll take a while. This is a uh, professional lab grade filter. It's going to go slow, but it should be good clean liquid coming out the bottom. Leave all of the uh, bits of fiberglass and uh, silicon dyes and everything else. Just leave that behind in the filter and get the good clean liquid out. Then we'll be ready to drop the gold. I won't make you watch this, it's going to take a while. Getting some nice, clean, clear filtrate down here. It's the right color for having gold dissolved in it. Doesn't uh, have the telltale greenish tint of copper or nickel, so that's good. Filter's catching everything. All that's left is uh, the silicon dyes and um, a little bit of the uh, fiberglass fibers that uh, didn't dissolve in all that witch's brew of acids we've attacked these BGAs with. Okay, filtration is complete. Let's uh, drop the gold. So I've got a uh, very strong solution of sodium metabisulfite here. Sorry, kick the camera leg. Ah, there we go. I'm starting to wonder if I had enough in there. But there's the magic color change. All right. Now we just got to wait and see what falls out of solution. I may let it sit overnight. Then uh, clean it, dry it, and weigh it up tomorrow and see what we got. Dendritic gold precipitate floating on top of the solution. See what we got tomorrow. How much we've got. I'll just let it all settle out. So here we are. Got a nice thick pile of gold on the bottom of this beaker. And uh, the liquid above the gold is pretty darn clear and colorless. A slight gray tint to it. I should check it with Stannis Chloride solution to make all the, sure all the gold has come out of solution, but it's looking pretty good. Yeah, that uh, that layer of gold on the bottom is a lot thicker than I was. I thought it was just a light dusting at first, but it's a pretty thick layer. 
once I swirled it around a bit. So I will uh, get this gold cleaned up, dried up, and weighed up, and I'll show you what I got. I'll do that off camera. Alrighty, so here's our gold. Boiled in uh, hydrochloric acid and then boiled in distilled water. Cleaned it up good, dried it out. Let's see what we got for weight here. So, well, it keeps jumping around. 0.62 grams, I guess it's going to settle at. So that's how much weight I got, how much gold I got out of all those uh, gold corner BGAs I started with. And how many were there? I forget. I'll have to go back and look at the earlier footage and see how many there were. There were a variety of sizes. There were a lot more small ones than big ones. Still, that's pretty respectable. Um, like I say, I'm not really a big fan of the wet, uh, wet ashing process. It, it took a long time. It used a lot of... Uh, sulfuric acid which I think probably is a lot more expensive than a little bit of propane my foundry would have used to ash those chips but on the other hand a lot of people don't have a foundry so the wet ashing process is probably their only viable method of doing this if they've got a lot of gold corner BGAs plus I still have the backs for those gold corner BGAs which like I said they don't contain much gold probably from all those I'll probably just get if I'm lucky, a tenth of a gram. We'll see. We'll see. So I'll just, I'm just going to let them sit. I'll wait until I've got more to deal with, and I'll process them all together. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Learned something from it. Keep it safe out there. Thanks for watching. Bye.